Hello, I'm Kyle Bradshaw and this is Chaparral Motorsports. Welcome to another tire test. Today we're out here with the Michelin Anarchy Wild 50-50 tire on a 2016 KTM 1190 Adventure R. Now the Anarchy Wild is a true 50-50 tire. Now a Michelin brought this tire to the marketplace in February of 2016. They had a very specific goal in mind. They want a tire that was going to be comfortable and a tire that was going to last longer than some of the other tires in the marketplace. Specifically speaking to the TKC80 and the Karoo 3. The TKC80 wore out really fast, less than 3,000 miles, so the Anarchy Wild was born. Now when it first came to market, it came to the market in four specific tire sizes. The tire sizes for the oil-cooled and the liquid-cooled R1200 GSs. Now knowing that those two motorcycles are the heaviest and some of the more powerful adventure bikes on the market, it was the perfect place to start. Those are radial tires. And part of the reason for the radial tire is to be able to dissipate heat better. So the more that you can dissipate heat and lower the temperature of the tire, the more longevity you're gonna get out of that tire. It's not just gonna melt off the motorcycles. But we now have over 36 different options for you in a mix of bias and radial ply tires to fit just about anything that can go on and off road. Michelin believes they have developed the perfect 50-50 tire, and today we're going to put it to its test. We're going to start out in the sand wash to scrub the tires in. We're going to take it up onto some high-speed twisty. We're going to cover some rain grooves, cement highways here in Southern California that are notoriously horrible for knobby tires. We're then going to get it up into the mountains, explore some dirt roads, do some hill climbs, some high-speed braking, maybe even hit a jump or two. I don't know. It all depends on what the day holds and what trails we end up going down. But we're literally going to put this tire through its paces over as many terrains as we can find. Now let's get it out on the road and see just exactly what it does do. Of course, the current year is 2019. There have been lots of tire manufacturers that have copied similar technology to this tire that came out in 2016. But back then, this was extremely revolutionary and nobody had seen the likes of it previously. So what they've done here with the tread blocks is they've actually siped out the sidewall of each of these blocks. That allows this block to actually move. What happens with that block moving is, for example, let's talk about a TKC80 real quick. Those are literally solid blocks of rubber that come out of the carcass of the tire. There's no differentiation or no cutout, it's just literally a solid block. So with those types of tires, we see leading edges completely worn down and the backs of the knobs sitting up high. And that's because when the tire gets put under pressure, the whole thing kind of angles down and the, and the carcass compresses and it gives you that really uneven wear. With the Michelin Anarchy Wild, that doesn't happen. And the reason is each of these blocks kind of float independently due to the siping that happens around the edges. It allows it to sit square on the pavement, allowing for more even wear than we find in lots of other tires out there in the segment. Another thing they did is this bridge block technology. You'll see every other lug here on the front has this bridge that's built between these two lugs. As this tire rolls over onto its edge, there's never gonna be a section or a time when that tire isn't gonna have at least two of these on the ground. So what these bridge blocks do is they tie these outside shoulder edges, which can be flexible by themselves, to the block next to it. That means when this bike is leaned all the way over and it's only touching this outside row of, of lugs, this lug is actually tied into this guy which allows it to have the stability of a much larger lug. That allows this bike to be able to rail through corners without feeling unstable. Another unique design of this tire is gonna be the fact that these, these faces are actually scooped and angled backwards. And then the back side of these actually fall off the other direction. That's gonna allow mud to not get stuck on a flat edge. I had a 2008 GSA and I put these tires through their paces on that bike. I'm really excited today to see what it feels like with the 21 inch front and the 18 rear. Two more things you're gonna notice is the fact that the tread is scooped or it's built in an arch, if you will. That's gonna allow the tire to be able to grip and grab. Not so much here in the front as far as grabbing goes and scooping, but in the rear, that scoop is gonna allow you to dig into soft stuff and throw it out behind you. Another thing you're gonna notice is the alternating blocks. So instead of having a solid row of blocks here that are all separated, we have alternating lugs here. So we have one on the outside, one on the inside, one on the outside, one on the inside. The other thing you're gonna notice is that second lug in that series is gonna be offset from the first. If you look at a lot of front dual sport tires like this, there are rows of knobbies 
they're not really offset. And that allows you to have more of a, a bite slip, a bite slip, a bite slip. Whereas this particular setup, you're gonna have a bite and then a bite and then a bite as it goes across the face of the tire as the tire hits the terrain. All right, now that we talked about the features, benefits, and details that went into this tire to give it what Michelin says is going to be optimum performance in just about every terrain, let's get mounted up and get out there so I can give you the in-helmet and seat of the pants feeling of what exactly these tires feel like while being put through those various situations. All right, pulling out of the shop here, let's test initial traction. Now keep in mind that these tires are not yet broken, but they are pretty sticky straight out of the gate. I'm able to lift the front wheel up with just twisting the throttle instead of that tire just spinning, which we have had with some of the other tires we've tested. Now throughout the day, you're gonna notice my traction control light is off, so we have no traction control. And that arrow there is saying that our tire pressure is low. Now we're running 30 PSI front and rear on these tires, just like we've done on all the other tires that we've run in this test. Now Michelin suggests that you do not have to air this tire down. They say whatever your manufactured pressure is, that's what they recommend you run. All right, so we're leaving Chaparral Motorsports. It is about, uh, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning now. We're gonna be heading out to the sand wash, get these things scrubbed in, and then we're gonna be up into the mountains there in order to test this thing on some awesome twisty roads and some pretty rugged dirt roads. If you haven't already, take a look at the link down below. The first link is going to be to the playlist that has all of the tires that we've been testing throughout this entire process. Now, after we're done with these last eight tires that we're testing, we're going to go ahead and compile the results and come back with a first, second, and third place for each of the different categories that we typically travel these tires on. Let me sidebar for a second. The rain grooves that you see here on the road are like the arch nemesis to Navi ADV tires. It makes the tires just squirm. If you take a look at some of our previous footage, some of those bikes, like literally the head shake would just be nuts. But this tire right now feels relatively planted. I'm not getting any movement in the bars. It feels great. I'm really digging it. As I referenced a little bit earlier, I have ridden these tires before. I rode them on a 2008 R1200 GS Adventure, and I also rode them on a 2014 liquid-cooled R1200 GS, the standard GS, not the Adventure. Now, on those particular bikes, they're very heavy bikes, and when I first got on and pulled out, I noticed that the bike kind of wanted to float as if it was on a cloud. I'm not feeling that with this tire. I'm feeling like this thing is really planted, and I'm not actually physically feeling those lugs squirm as I thought I would from my previous experience. Now out here onto this little section, looks like they've graded it since the last time we were out here. First two seconds in the dirt, I can say that this tire feels really good. It feels really planted. I can move the bars back and forth and it just, it, you can see the bike is just tracking with that. There's no slip or slide. I haven't been able to find any little lips yet to be able to hit in order to see if we can't lift that front tire. But this is pretty soft. I mean, they graded this, but it's really soft. There's a, probably a two inch layer of soft stuff kind of on the top here. And then the bottom is a little bit harder. All right, this is where we drop into the wash where we have deep sand. As you can see, we've got some ATV guys that have been out here as well as a couple dirt bikes. I mean, did you see that? The amount of push that we just got right there. All right, here's some rocks right here to go over. Dude, total momentum forward. This thing's great. a little bit more wiggle than I would have imagined from the uh, scoop pattern of that front tire. What are you doing? 45 miles an hour across the sand right here. This stuff here is really soft. Decomposed rock. You can see that our front tire sinks in pretty good.
So we came around that corner right there and this front tire just dug right in and buried itself, which is why we fell over. All right, let's do a little bit of a hill climb here. Let's go up to the left. Dude, not even, not even a question. Yeah, this front end tracks so well, it feels really good. So it looks like somebody's left a hose running up there so that these homeless guys can get a bath or a shower. Take a look. We actually have running water down here in the wash coming from somewhere up there. playing in the sand and be down here for like 45 minutes messing around. But this is where we have rocks mixed into the sand. I've hit some of these hidden ones really hard from time to time. This here is some soft stuff. You hear that motor? First gear at 8,000, 9,000 RPM. It's chugging through this stuff. I feel good. No loss of traction anywhere that we've gone today. It was a pretty decent rock we just hit with that front tire too. All right, there's only one word that I have for these Anarchy Wild tires and that would be impressive. There wasn't a single piece of action that we did down there where these things faltered or struggled or was even remotely challenging for the tire. Very impressed. All right, now we're leaving. Leaving the beloved sand wash, headed over to the mountains. So Highway 18 here is going to wrap us all the way up over to the top of the mountain range. But right now, we're going to jump off onto Old Waterman Canyon Road. It's our little back country road, if you will, with tar snakes and gravel and potholes and all kinds of things you'd see on a typical back road. The transition from on the gas to on the brake and into a corner feels really smooth. The transition's really nice. On some of the tires we've tested, that transition could have been abrupt, if you will. See right there? The back end just came totally woo, backed it right in. So now that is me putting mad power down to the back tire with no aids on at all. I'm actually making it do that, if you will. But this tire's really sticky. There's a lot of the other tires that we've been on so far that would not have been able to make that transition as easy as it is now. So right there, I'm romping on the throttle. This tire's sticking like glue. Again, that's max throttle. I'm really coming around the corner, pinning it open, and that's when the back end's sliding around. This tire is an extremely controlled tire, and I don't want you to think at all that this tire is sketchy, because this thing is like glue on the road. It's just a matter of driving habits as to why that thing is stepping out like it is. controlled. It's awesome. All right, 
right, so let's take a look and see what we had going on over there. Man, take a look. At the back of each of these lugs, where we put full pressure, these lugs actually fold here at the back. It's allowing that thing to shift completely, allowing us to maintain contact with the ground instead of it being hard and just letting the tire slip or making the tire slip. As you can also see, we're getting all the way over to the side here. Now, most of the backing in happened on this side. And you can see that we're definitely taking off these corners here at the top from that slide that we're getting. Now again, that slide is super, super controlled. It really feels like Velcro down there as soon as you let off the throttle just a little bit. Again, here at the top, you can see that these tread blocks are definitely holding their weight. You can see that we are getting a little bit of fold here on the sides, but man, these things are sticking like glue. I love it. Now they've got some tight, flowy canyon carving finished up. Let's go ahead and hit Highway 18 to see if we can't get some high-speed corners. So I do have to say that when I'm in these corners, I do feel these legs squirm more than some of the others that I've ridden on. It's like you can feel the ground moving beneath you, but you know that it's solid and it's not gonna go anywhere. How weird is that? The tire's not breaking free. It's stuck down there like glue. Again, a lot of it has to do with the amount of throttle. Like we're laying full throttle down to this thing, but we're coming in nice and easy as compared to down there in the canyon when the corners were sharper, you come in and out of that corner, you punch it, and that's really what got it to break free or to break loose. All right, now where we're headed, we're gonna come over here to this little saddle over here. We're gonna head up and over the hill to that little saddle over there, that's where the jump is, and then we're gonna be back over on top of that peak over there for our hill climbs. All right, here we go, a little dirt road section, guys. Now this road we do have to be a little bit careful on as there is traffic on this road. Ready? A little bit of front wheel loft, not a whole lot. This is an extremely well-groomed dirt road. This is a dirt road that the majority of adventure bike riders cruise on while fully loaded, just traversing through national forests and parks and things of that nature and things of that nature as you can see there's lots of two-wheel drive car and pickup truck tire marks out here so see that road over there the one that goes straight up that's going to be the road that we're going to be doing our hill climb on. So first run, we're gonna come out at a running start here. We're gonna be in second gear. We're just gonna see puttering up in second gear, kind of what we do. Cake, just cake. And what's at the top of that little hill? San Bernardino Valley. Check it out, guys. I'm gonna go down this hill a couple different ways. The first way I'm gonna go down is on my brakes, because a guy who's fully loaded, luggage everywhere, isn't gonna be bombing down this thing for the most part. They're gonna be going down nice and gingerly, making sure that their bike with all of their housewares doesn't fall over. So this is a part of the test before that was a little bit tricky. Some of the tires, that front tire wanted to skid and slide. As you can see, the set that we have on today is allowing us to have total control as we go down this hill. Nice work, Michelin, nice work. Now, the next charge up this hill, I'm gonna go put this thing into first gear, kinda go from a stop right here, and see how it does about picking up speed as we start that ascent. There we go. First gear, I'm just gonna cruise it, make it get traction all the way up. Super, super good traction. 
this trip down, I'm gonna take it with a little bit more speed. As a guy who's not running fully loaded up, we go down, see kind of what the what the front tire tracks like, if you will. So it doesn't really slide, it doesn't at all. Just whoosh, down we go. On that first run, we had tons of traction in first gear, but we kind of reached the limit of that particular gear itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it into second gear here quick and see if we can't power up this thing a little bit quicker. second gear so much more range so much more motion now this next section of trail that we're going to be traversing over is typically pretty torn up it's not maintained by the government it is a passable road for the most part uh, but the last several times i've been down here it's been pretty torn up so we'll see just exactly how torn up it is today and how well these tires do traversing over that type of rugged terrain snake tracks nice pretty big ruts here nice large jagged rocks I guess due to the fact we haven't had rain for a while most of these big ruts have been kind of tamed down by the four-wheel drive trucks that have been up through here. So what I'm feeling from these rocks is I'm getting some pretty good feedback. The radial sidewall of that rear tire um, and the more compliant 90-90-21 uh, sidewall up here in the front is allowing this tire to conform over these rocks instead of just being a really hard surface over the top. That combined with the fact that the uh, tread compound itself is softer than a lot of the tires that we've tested. Now because these blocks flex so much, we actually have significant wear on both the leading and trailing edges. Leading edges for takeoff and when we spin the tire already. Woo! Um, and then the trailing edges for when we're braking. Under braking power, those blocks are shifting and then turning up a little bit. Very different than the other blocks that we've ridden on in this test. Somebody got stuck there. That wasn't fun. So this is the hill climb that we were doing before we fell on that other one. So the Anarchy Adventure tire on the BMW, this is the hill climb that we were taking when we were testing that particular tire. After having come down out of the mountains, down here onto some city streets, I gotta say that without modifying air pressure at all, we got 30 in the front and 30 in the rear. Being able to hammer all of the soft sand and the dirt and the rocks and all that mess, and then being able to carve canyons and be able to hammer high speed sweepers, this tire is a performer. Good afternoon and welcome back to Chaparral Motorsports. It's been about five hours that we've been out there on these Anarchy Wild tires from Michelin. These tires absolutely do not disappoint. If there's one word that I'm gonna give for these tires, overall, it's gonna be impressive. They handle the street like a dream. It's probably the second best feeling tire as far as a sport bike type feedback getting back from the road that I felt on a 50-50 tire. Now I've gotta say that these tires are one of the most aggressive dirt tires that you can put on your bike. These tires had no problems in any terrain that we put them through. Now the test that we put them through is a very rigorous test and you're gonna see lots of wear on the rubber from this particular test. Now out there in the real world where people are traveling on these things lots of distances, we've got guys reporting anywhere from 4,000 miles to 8,000 miles of range. Now that all really depends on your tire pressure, the amount of weight you're carrying, are you riding solo, are you riding two up? So I'm gonna say an average mileage for this tire that almost anybody can expect to get is about 5,000 miles. Now, if you're looking at how well this tire did in each of the scenarios we put it through, that is a huge value. I'm Kyle Bradshaw from Chaparral Motorsports. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this tire, leave a comment down below. And if you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. And if you want more action like this, come in directly to your email inbox, hit that subscribe button, and more importantly, the notification bell. Thank you again for watching. We really appreciate you. Until next time, take care and ride safe.